Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have an amazing guest all the way in Scotland. We have Steven Rayner and his video popped up on my feed a couple days ago. He had a huge transformation, so many surprises doing 31 days plant-based. And I think he said he had seen plant-based diet in documentaries and the media in the past. And he kind of just thought it was nuts and just shook it off. Never thought he'd do it. And he did it. So I cannot wait to share his results with you guys. You guys have some awesome questions for Steven as well. And he's just so amazing. So give him a bunch of love in the comments. I'll also link his awesome channel down below. Go follow him. And let's hop into it. Hey, Stephen, how's it going today? Hello. Yeah, um, very well. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for the lovely introduction as well. Um, hey. Like I said, it was odd that that video would show up on your channel with it being, you know, a relatively big channel and stuff. It's cool to see, like, I didn't expect it to hit because all my other, like, short form stuff I've just been done. That was my first long form video. So I kind of took a punt on it. And then, um, yeah, I think it came out really well. I mean, the comment section is very mixed. Maybe we can chat with that in a, in a little <laughs> while. It's, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's mixed. But, you know, I think um, there's a lot, of, it's, it's being polarizing in that area kind of comes across like that. And everybody's kind of like that. There's people are on the fence. There's not very many people on the fence, to be fair. People are either completely against it or completely for it. And I think like me trying to sit in the middle and say, you know, money where my mouth is, let's try it. Because I was, you know, I'm not going to sit on either side of the fence till I've done it. Um, which I think a lot of people that that the whole point of that video was you can bash it or you can be on the side of it, but at least try it. And so for me, it was just about deciding, you know, figuring it out, giving it a shot and sharing my experience, non-biased, neither way. You know, I, I don't mind. I don't, I'm not too bothered what people do and going into the learnings from it uh, in a little while. But yeah, it was, it was an interesting experience and it was good to, to get it out. I just wanted to feel like I wanted to get it out to people to tell them what happened and they can take and do what, do with the information as they please. But yeah, that no, was good. Okay, cool. So let's start with what sort of triggered you. I know you'd said like you saw the diet in the media in the past and you kind of just thought it's kind of crazy, I think, or whatever, ridiculous, yeah. blow it off. So what made you, what gave you just the spark to, okay, let's try this. So there's quite a few things. The first one of the initial spark of it was uh, take on sort of fitness clients and nutrition just to, to know I'm not medically trained. I'm not a professional in any way. I have sort of personal trainer qualifications and I've got little certificates that say I know some things about micronutrients and macronutrients, but they mean very little, as you know, in this day and age. And so I had a client that came to me and says, look, I'm, I'm plant-based. And at the time I was, you know, I've done carnivore. I've been a long-term meat eater, big-term meat eater. A lot of my socials have been around meat and stuff. And yeah. Then I got into the realm of, well, if I'm going to test things, I might as well test this. And, and it came along with, I've got kind of, or I've had hereditary through family-based stuff. I've had um, relative hypertension. So I'd have blood readings that sat up at sort of 150, had it checked out and looked at and stuff. And they said, it's nothing that needs medicated yet. Um, so with that, and then I'd been looking, watching a few documentaries and I had been, you know, just seeing it kind of forced down my throat at the same point. And I was kind of getting annoyed <laughs> with it, just like everybody else, right? <laughs> um, but I was in the land of, I'm just going to write this off as it's not something for me. I love meat. That is how I work. And, and that came along with a few other things. My missus had mentioned, you know, gut issues for me, you know, some of the, some of the horrible stuff that, you, that, you know, I talked about in the video. Um, and so it kind of, as I had this thing that was just hitting the side of the head, I had clients that were saying they want to talk about plant-based. I knew nothing about it. I can do all the reading in the world, but for me, the way that I coach is that I like to try things first because learned experience for me is super important. I think that especially in this day and age when there's no real barrier to entry for coaching, I think that learned experience is super, super important. So for me to be able to say to someone, these are the things that are going to happen. These are the things you're going to see, you're going to feel. It makes it much easier for me to be a better coach that way. So yeah, I had the clients here. I had media stuff. I had people popping up everywhere. It was the next best thing, yada, yada, the health issues. I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm just going to go from day one. I'm not going to dip my toe in and do this. I'm just going to go 31 days, cut all dairy and um, any meat products, any animal products, just cut everything and do 31 days and, and see what happens. So that was what sparked it off originally for me. Wow. And okay, so what did a daily diet look like before? And then <laughs> what did you start eating on the plant-based 31 days? So um, before a normal diet would look like something like, well, it, it depended on what what I was into at the time. Um, I'd went everywhere from steak and eggs for breakfast to um, chicken and rice. Chicken and rice was just a staple all the time. I just eat chicken. So I'm kind of a, or have been a competitive CrossFitter. I'm a CrossFit coach. I've, wow. been, into the, I've been into the powerlifting world. Uh, I've been kind of everywhere around the, the weightlifting and sports space. I did um, professional MMA back in the day. So I kind of just was wow. somebody who was heavy, high protein, high carb, some fats. It just kind of depended. 
very little leafy greens, very little salad. It's just not my thing. It's never been. I'm just one of those people where I would just move the salad to the side. Sometimes I'd eat it, sometimes I wouldn't. So this wasn't even just learning to adjust the movement away from animal protein. It was the adjustment to eating green things. And, you know, my diet was never amazing, but I would always hit a protein target. I would consistently track calories. I would try and eat as healthy as possible. When I sit quote unquote healthy, now it's changed my whole understanding of what healthy is. But what, what I thought healthy was, was high protein, lean meats, um, nuts, seeds, uh, starchy carbs, you know, that, that normal kind of, kind of view. And I would supplement along with it. So I'd make sure that I was getting, you know, multivitamins and vitamin D and, you know, I would kind of make up for my lack of micronutrients through supplementation. Mm -hmm. And so that was just kind of what it looked like, but there would be cheat meals consistently. Um, I was kind of putting on a little bit of weight cause I was training less cause I was taking over a gym. And so that kind of led me to a point where I think there was a lot of health markers began to decrease because of my lack of training. And I think when they say you can't out train a bad diet, I think I kind of was out training a bad diet originally. So it wasn't great. Um, but that was what it would look like. So cereals, lots of lean meat, lots of protein, mm, some high fats, very high carb days, lots of refined sugar, most, not very much ultra processed food, to be honest, not a huge amount. I would still because I ate so much, I'd be on maybe 4,000 calories, something along those lines. Yeah. I was still eating most of that in chicken and rice because it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to eat that much if you're eating cookies and whatever else. So it was relatively clean, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't kind of shy away from anything. I would just eat whatever was there and whatever I had, I had prepped. So that was kind of what it looked like. Not great, relatively high protein, high carb around training just to kind of try and fuel and recover, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And then you decided to do plant-based 31 days. Take <laughs> us through day one. How were you eating and what, like overall, how did you eat through the experience? So day one, uh, I went to the supermarket. So I, I kind of, I don't like cooking very much. So I'll do things that are easy. And when you want to dip your toe into the, into the kind of vegan or plant-based world, everything's a recipe book. I can't cook very well. Everything <laughs> yeah. is, it's because everybody wants, you know, and, and now I'm one of the try to convert people if I'm able, even though I'm not fully plant-based now. And so, you know, people will go, yeah, but what about the taste? And what about this? And what about that? And so I know why people, when they try to convert people, they say, you know, have it, but have it as this recipe. And you're like, that makes sense. But like, I can't cook. So, you know, so I kind of thought, right, I'm going to ignore it. And what I'm going to do is, oh, for some, for some backstory, because this was an experiment for me, I didn't want to try and make it the healthiest diet possible. And I, I mentioned this in the video. And so what I kept in was, you know, quite a lot of sugar. So like the, the chocolate alternative or chocolate alternatives and whatever else, because I was eating quite a bit of sugar before. And I was very aware that health markers would improve if I was just to jump into the realm of plant-based and my diet got healthier, quote unquote, with more micronutrients from whole foods. And so what I tried to do was I tried to still keep the sugar content quite high so that it wasn't just a placebo effect that I was getting all of the increases from a healthier diet rather than it specifically being swapping across the plant base. So, you know, just, okay. just as a, a kind of precursor to that. So I decided on day one, I'll go to the supermarket and I'll just look around because usually I would just walk past the plant-based bit and the vegan alternative bit. And I would just be like, ah, oh, it's, you know, what's the point. And then this time I was like, right, I'm engulfed in it. And actually I was astounded by the number of alternatives that were actually there. So what I attempted to do on day one was mirror my old diet as far as kind of cereals, milks, meats, um, kind of sausages and whatever. I tried to just mirror that, but with plant-based alternatives that were marketed as alternatives. So smart. I know that, yeah, I, 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 know that I, I know that a lot of them were, you know, probably ultra processed because mm. it's a completely separate discussion, right? The, the ultra processed one, when you're talking the difference between animal protein and, and plant, there's, there's two things because a lot of the foods I was eating in the plant-based world were probably by definition ultra processed because they have a lot of things in them to make them taste better. So I kind of avoided that, but I just said, right, how much can I mirror my old diet and with the new plant-based alternatives? And actually it wasn't as difficult as I thought. The only one, and I meant, I touched on this in the, in the video was cheese. So the, the vegan world and the plant-based world have not cracked cheese yet. And <laughs> I was a cheese lover before and I just kind of went, okay, right. I'll, I'll just deal with it as I, as I tried that. And I thought I'll just, it's fine. I don't need it too much. But then, so I came away from the, from the supermarket and I had kind of, um, one of my favorite things through the whole thing was these spicy bean burgers. So I'm a spice fan. That's my thing. And so to make things that I thought would, would potentially taste bland, chickpeas, so on and so forth, I like to make things super spicy. So I kind of just thought, so I would constantly eat chicken and rice. 
So instead, what I did was uh, I was like, right, Googling, what can I find as an alternative to chicken? And everybody was kind of like sweet potatoes, which were a great one. They became a super staple. And then it was kind of like the actual chicken alternatives and kind of ground beef alternatives that were, you know, made from mushrooms and chickpeas. Um, and originally, this is a, an odd story. I'd assumed I had a, a kind of stomach problem a few years back when I had portobello mushrooms. So I'd always avoided mushrooms because I thought I had some type of intolerance. It clearly turns out because of the alternatives that I had this time and my stomach improving that I do not have an intolerance to mushrooms. So, wow. so yes, so, 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 so the mushroom alternatives, they then became a kind of staple. So there was things that I did with mushrooms. So instead of like, you know, I don't know, some type of cream stuffed chicken, I would have stuffed peppers instead. And, uh, you know, but that kind of, I came away thinking I've managed to mirror the bulk of things that the swap to almond milk was odd or a kind of mix between different milks, soy mm -hmm. milk, oat milk. And that's one of the things that has stayed now. I'm a ridiculous caffeine addict. And <laughs> so I drink a lot, of, a lot of caffeine and I, I've now consistently oat milk latte is now my, that is now my go-to. I, I no longer have dairy in my coffee. <laughs> That's day, day. So, so, so that that stuck yeah. um, because I just preferred the taste. Yeah. It took me a little while and I had to try a few, um, you know, it, it, yeah, that took a bit. But yeah, I, th I thought that I'd managed to mirror my old diet, which made the transition pretty easy. I had to get a little better at cooking because some things are a little bit, you know, more bland, but it's because they have less ingredients. Mm -hmm. And usually things taste amazing because they've been filled with sugar and additives and sweeteners and, and whatever. And a lot of that's taken away. So if you want to make it taste better, you do have to learn a little bit to cook. But actually, I managed to mirror the bulk of it. So that then uh, transitioned on to it being relatively easy for me. So I had, I would have morning would be kind of some type of toast or something along those lines. That I fell in love with this vegan chocolate spread, which, you know, when I said I'd keep the sugars in uh, and there was no difference for me, like I liked Nutella and whatever before. So swapping across to that was fine. Like I say, I know that people kind of say, well, what's the point if you weren't going to be healthy? But health wasn't, for me, the biggest thing I was trying to go for. Actually, it was just to see what specifically plants would do. Yeah. And so, you know, with the, the chocolate spread thing, lots of fruits, I, I ended up eating a ton of fruit, fell in love with fruit again for, you know, for, for the first time. And it's just, I'd kind of just thought, oh, just fruits are thing I eat when I want to be healthy. But actually, that's where I started bringing in lots and lots of fruit back in again. And then, um, yeah, like I say, like kind of, vegan like pre-made meals and stuff so that that kind of stuff I just started experimenting so I never really ended up sticking to a strict regime of a diet so when I'm normally in a quote-unquote diet it'll be very easy because if I'm eating four or five times a day I want it to just be the same thing because I'm just I just get fatigue from trying to make it varied because there was so much variety of things that I could try in such a mm -hmm. short period of time I ended up being super varied through the whole time I was making like alternatives of lasagna and um, cauliflower rice and you know there was just every type of of different variation of thing that's been made to be you know plant-based it yeah it didn't end up being boring for me I don't know how that would work if I was to extend the time period but now I'm finding it quite easy where if I go out for a meal and there is a plant thing on the menu I'll use that because one of the biggest takeaways for me from the whole thing I've talked about this a few times is that in the meat world a burger and this is my kind of uh, catch line if you like about this but if a burger in the meat world just has to be a burger and people go mm, burger but because the the world of plants is kind of it's still trying to knock its yeah knock its way on the door the companies that make this stuff need to make it taste so much exponentially better than the meat because a burger can be super bland and people go yum burger mm -hmm. but if if a if a plant alternative wants to compete it has to taste so good that you know, it, that people will choose to eat it. And I found that actually, in a lot of cases, especially going out and eating at restaurants, the plant stuff was so much better. Like if the places I'd been before and I had a staple, if I went and had a plant-based version, it was just better. Burgers and, you know, whatever else that, that they made was yeah, just better. Yeah, I agree. I know what you mean. Because in the past, I used to eat a lot of burgers before I went like raw. And then over the years, like way long ago, before I went raw too, I had black bean burgers or even a couple yeah. times early as a cheat day as a raw vegan black bean burgers and I found them better and they made me feel they tasted better they didn't yeah. like gross they were delicious and then they made me feel yeah. good after well before we talk about it, I want to talk about the benefits and everything that happened before we do that yeah. did you have like a favorite recipe was there anything that stood out as like this was my go-to this made it easy to stay on track this was like my favorite thing yeah completely and funnily enough from a person who never had salads before. Those spicy bean burgers I talked about before, which kind of have 
They have a whole bunch of stuff in them, sweet corn, kidney beans, whatever. They have a whole bunch of beans, black beans. They were frozen burgers, so probably not great. But it would be two of those cooked. Um, they're quite kind of big, chunky things with literally a mixing bowl of salad. So I'd have, you know, lettuce, rocket leaves, whatever, anything in it. And there was this sweet chili sauce stuff that, that I got that was just, you know, it became a staple. It was just something at the supermarket that was, you know, vegan friendly and so on and so forth. And it was, that was as simple as it was. And I don't know why, it just became my favorite thing. The things were so tasty with the sauce on it. Like I could just eat mountains of it. And so not only was I becoming satiated from less calories from like a psychological point of view, because I'm eating a mixing bowl of food. It was also super healthy, super nutritious with, you know, I, I would just throw in lots and lots of vegetables, no matter what I had around. And I, I started to, again, experiment with different vegetables that I'd never had. I, I kind of had roasted vegetables. So I'd be roasting big trays of whatever. I'd go to the reduced section and just take everything that was there and just throw it, roast it and throw it into the salad as well. And so that was kind of my, my staple go-to, my favorite thing. There was that. And then there was a, it was meant to be like a copy. It, there's a, a place called Bread Meets Bread. We went there and it, and it was a burger. And it was meant to be a copy of a blue cheese burger. I don't know what the burger was made of, but that was my favorite takeaway meal ever. It was like sweet potato fries and some type of copy blue cheese burger. And it was just unbelievable. I'll think about it forever. And if we ever go back again, I will choose that over the rest of the menu. Wow. Not for any reason. I would literally choose it. So. And it sounds like you're probably eating some things that you hadn't eaten in years or maybe never even tried. For, for sure, especially on, on the fruit side. Like, it, it just sounds so stupid to go, you just go, right, it's bananas and it's apples and it's whatever. But then when you start to experiment, like I was trying lychees and like, you know, just the randomest things because you're like, oh, I just want to go and try this because I'm trying to fill my trolley with as many things and you get away with it. So, because, you know, I was, I was still in that phase where I was like, right, I want to lose a bit of weight. So I was in a small deficit while I did this kind of through it. I was roughly at maintenance, but I ended up being in a small deficit. And I knew I could get away with eating masses of volume for the amount of calories that I could get. And, and that was another, another takeaway, like things, bowls of strawberries and stuff. You just, you take it for granted when instead of having a donut, you're just naturally, I think you eat a bit healthier when you are in the plant-based world, but then you fall in love with taste stuff again. And that was, you know, and that's kind of been a hangover from it as well is that I've just fell in love with these things again. So yeah, yeah, for sure. And talk about fiber. Like to me, I think fiber is really important. I think a lot of people just do not get enough fiber. So it yeah. sounds to me like your fiber intake increased like big time. So what effect did that have on like your digestion and what other benefits, like what are maybe a list of like all the benefits yeah. and all the things that happen? So I'll, I'll try and keep the, the first part PG, but from a stomach. Don't worry, point, our we'll, viewers we'll just, don't care. <laughs> okay. Well, We'll just, we'll just say stomach. So before I was, you know, I, I took it, I took it as a normal thing. And this is absolutely because of an increase in fiber. Absolutely. And even though I'm kind of now, what, 60, 40, 80, 20 most days or whatever, as I transition out, I can talk to my kind of plan for it in the future later on. But as I'm kind of transitioning to that, the increase in fiber was so, two things. It was super easy being on plant-based. Like I was just clearly getting a ton of it, but also I took for granted I was going to the toilet four or five times a day. Sometimes I'd be there for a long time before whatever. And that just stopped. So I would be there for very little time and I would, it, it, things were just easy. And I didn't, you know, I didn't have, I wasn't sitting there after meals being like, oh, I'm so full and I'm so fatigued and I'm that crash didn't happen. And, you know, and it probably doesn't have much to do with the fiber, but I think that, you know, as things make their way through your digestive system, it's clear that the more fiber you have, the things will just pass easier. And, that was one of the biggest things for me because you take that for granted that the time spent when you're just feeling like you need to go to the toilet and and that that mm -hmm. really really helped and it's definitely the fiber and I think just getting the fiber by accident right? <laughs> just by <laughs> right? my, which which is like I'm not even trying here and and it, and it just it just cleared up like my, my missus will testify that being in the same bed as me and in the same house as me was a godsend that that whole time for her and even you know the, the after effects <laughs> of that so so yeah, she was super thankful. So that was the fiber thing was good. The, the next, if, if we work through the list of kind of, of benefits, things that I, that I found. The next one uh, was energy levels in the morning. So I was one of those people who would just roll out of bed, fall over, be like, I'm so tired. If I desperately need to get up, if I was able, I would be like, you know, I'll just take another hour. I will snooze. And like I, I mentioned this in the video, I don't know how many of these and I don't claim you know that this is exactly what caused it I don't know how much of it was placebo I can only go on the data that I've got but the energy levels in the morning straight out of bed were exponentially better than they were before and you know and I don't want anybody to think I, I am a salesman of this you know I'm like I say I'm not fully plant-based I don't but 
I'm only going on the data that I've got. And, and for me, it made such a big difference. I would jump up, I could push my, like I say, caffeine addict before, I could push that out longer. Um, and if, if anybody looks into the way that kind of adenosine works in the morning, you're supposed to wait 90 minutes till after you wake up before things kick in and you're supposed to have caffeine. But I would just be somebody that rolled out the coffee machine is on an alarm timer. So it just starts immediately. I'd walk through the kitchen <laughs> and I'd be glugging, you know, 10 minutes after, after I'd opened my eyeballs. So that kind of stopped and, and I, di I didn't need it. And especially when I think you know, I'm, I'm bringing in more fruits and stuff, I would replace it with that and I could push the coffee out longer. So yeah, no, that, that was, that was the energy level thing in the morning was fantastic. And then the next one was sleep quality was, you know, was good as well. So wear tracker, I had a whoop at the time and I was using that quite a lot. And it, it just felt to me like I, I did introduce magnesium in as a supplement as mm -hmm. well. Cause I, I really, when I'd, a lot of the scaremongering from people who don't like plant-based, they talk about vitamin B12 deficiencies and stuff. So I had a look at my vitamin re uh, schedule as a whole and said, right, okay, maybe I should bring in magnesium. So whether it was the plants or whether it was the magnesium, unsure, but I was getting longer periods of deep sleep, less periods of wakening. And I was generally, and I think it's either maybe that contributed to the more, be more energized in the morning, or it was the plant stuff that was giving me, you know, the, there's, there's so many things that could have happened, but Again, just going on the data that I've got, certainly the sleep quality was improved in the the thirty one day time frame. The biggest one for me, which is a uh, you know the, the the health one to talk about, the blood pressure, so hypertension stuff. And this was one that I've never exhibited symptoms of this, and and it was interesting to look at some of the comments that came on that video. You know, they're saying oh the guys eat sugar, but is blaming you know is blaming animal protein and so on and so forth. So so that that that's cool. I get that, but. I would take regular blood pressure readings and they were sitting at kind of the high 40s or low 50s consistently. And over the 31 day period, no stressors changed. So I have a two year old, I have an extremely um, stressful nine to five job. I run and own a gym. So like there's a lot going on. I'm in an extremely stressful environment, 16, 17 hour days. And so none of those things changed, none of them at all. But yet my blood pressure began to came down on an average. And when you're talking the last week from about 130 to, you know, low 130s, high 120s. And that difference is massive. Like from a, from a point of view of a medical point of view, from when I'm older, that's the difference from me living an extra however many years, right? And, and what's happened is as I've, it's hard to tell where it comes from, whether it's bringing in more healthy foods, whether it's that again, can only go on what I've got. True, but yeah. now, since bringing a lot more of that stuff in, it's consistently stayed lower. So it's went up a little bit as I brought things back in, but now I'm getting low 30 readings and it's, you know, it, maybe it's a medical marvel, maybe it's uh, unsure, but it's, yeah, that, that was one of the biggest things for me because really it brings, when you have kids and stuff, it brings mortality into, into the question, right? You don't really think about it much until you have children and then after that, it's like, okay, right, I, I need to be here for a much longer time. And actually, that really changed my perspective on how important diet is, finding a diet that works for me and improves my health markers. Mm -hmm. And that was that that was the, the one of the takeaways when we talk about learnings and the, and the positive benefits of it. One of the learnings for me was that people might think they have the right diet for them. And some people, it may be keto, some people maybe, you know, what, but it's the one that works for me is clearly this one. Um, and it's, wow. you know, or, or, or a version of it. And it was kind of a tough pill for me to swallow because I was always, you know, the big hard weightlifter, the eight, I eat meat, I am caveman. Right. And I think a lot of it coming off of that was just like, this is probably the thing that's going to help me as I age, I'm early thirties just now. And as I age into forties and fifties, as it's much harder to manipulate health markers as you get older because of an accumulation of life. I think that if this thing in such a short period of time can make such a dramatic change to health markers, it's probably something to pay pretty close attention to. So, yeah. so yeah, so that, so, so that, that's kind of that. And then another couple of, um, couple of benefits felt great in the gym. Um, I think I, I was starting to lose a bit of weight and I kind of attributed that to being slightly lower carb, I think. Um, so I'd be slightly depleted in glycogen. I pay kind of very close attention to how I'm feeling when I'm weightlifting lifts didn't really take any kind of hit or, or, or detriment, but I think I was looking a lot smaller and you know uh, my, my waistline started to come in and, and and i think it could have been well two things one reduction in inflammation i'm almost sure um because joint pain started to get less and that was one of the big things for me i, I did have a pretty decent mobility uh, regime at the time but kind of joint pain stuff started to alleviate a little bit 
Um, and also, yes, yeah, I started to trim up a little bit. And I think that might have a little bit to do with the glycogen depletion through not as many carbs. But yeah, um, that's one, one, of, one of the big things that I kind of thought, oh, well, I'm going to be terrible here. I'm, I'm not going to be able to lift anything. I'm not going to. But actually, it didn't really have a huge amount of, of impact on it. And I know everybody says, what about protein? And actually, there's a lot of things, especially in the last year that have come out about the amount of protein absorption that you can actually have and it's actually much lower than what we initially thought it was which makes not you know it's not actually that difficult and people always play that card people who've never tried it always say it's so difficult to get protein and i never really had an issue with that i found an alternative vegan protein shake that i would put in with oats and uh, oat milk and that was fine mm -hmm. and i was hitting my target no bother once there is a little bit of a learning education piece and that was one thing that i found where it might be difficult on the face of it to get your protein in but actually once you just do a little bit of digging, not even, you know, like a day's worth, you just, you you can get there. So, so yeah, I think there was, there was the list of benefits was large, I would say yeah. much, much bigger than I had expected for sure. Yeah. And I can definitely relate to some of those, like the energy thing. That's the biggest reason I eat this way. My energy is just through the roof, yeah. right? When I bounce out of bed. And like you said, with the bathroom, that made me realize when I go to the bathroom, like not to be too much information, but People don't even know if it's a number one or number two because it's so fast and so easy yep. versus some other yep. members of my household who eat the complete opposite diet. They're taking a while in there unless they yep. just want to break from me. I don't think so, but they're taking like a while. So, and Completely. that's crazy about your blood pressure. And, you know, I interview so many people who go on these like plant-based cleanses or plant-based diets, or they mess around with this. And I see that so often with people who turn plant-based, yep. their blood, high blood pressure problems are completely reversed. It's crazy. And I know happiness is a big thing. Like for me, when I turned to plants, like I did notice a massive difference in my happiness and my moods and how I felt. Did you see any difference there or was it the same or was it less? So mine's is interesting. So um, I put out the first time for a little while ago. So I got diagnosed with bipolar when I was 18. Um, so I'm heavily medicated for that. And it's difficult to be able to put a marker on that. So I could say yes, in, in the time I was happier, but I think it was because I felt better about the choices I was making and it's hard mm -hmm. for me to detach the two yeah. because it, 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 intuitively I'm like, right, I'm, I feel like I'm doing a good job because I set out to do a thing and I'm happy and proud I'm doing this thing. And I think that generally gave me more, a bigger lease of life. And so it's hard to detach whether it was because of that, I was generally a, you know, a happier person or it was because I was achieving this thing. And so so yes, absolutely. I would say it was in a better state frame of mind during the time, but whether it was because one of those things, I'm sure yeah. you'll notice I'm, I try as, as hard to be not one side or the other on this quite often. And that's very intentional because I don't want to seem like I am one way or the other. Um, but that, yeah, I would be happier through that time, yeah. but whether it's one of those things, but, but yeah, for sure. It'd be interesting to see what it would do to brain chemistry. Cause obviously there's mm -hmm. not much, but there's a lot of chatter around the gut microbiome stuff, which is super mm -hmm. important and i think in the next few years that's going to become a very very hot topic uh, as more of the science comes out and i think actually as far as kind of beans and plants and stuff go i think there will be many more links get made between you know how you're happy you are and how you feel mood wise when mm -hmm. when you're eating more plants for sure uh, but for me not much to report because it's cloudy circumstances yeah and did you feel like super bloated or gassy or anything at first because i know some people when they first transition and maybe that is because their microbiome isn't used to like the plant foods they're used to other things and i know even a lot of people when they transition on a cleanse or a different way of eating they can feel really bloated for like three five seven days until like it transitions so was that the case for you right away i can't remember if you said at the beginning or was it just like boom like you noticed a positive difference right away it, it was positive difference within yeah. two days um, cool. yeah, li literally two days and it was straight up on the fiber thing. I think I've decided from this that there, and I put this in the video that there's a high chance I potentially have a slight dairy intolerance. Um, mm. but then the more I've read about this, then I learned that the majority of people have a dairy intolerance. Um, I agree there's, a with lot, that. there's a lot, there's a lot of research that points to that. I think that mine is quite higher. So now I've almost cut dairy out almost completely. Um, as, as a result of, of this experiment and it's made, you know, it's made exponential increases to me, but um, yeah, I didn't, no, I did I didn't really, it wasn't enough to, maybe there was a little bit, but I just took it as a, yeah, this is my body being like, well done for eating well, let's clear out and start again. Um, and then, yeah, so no, I wouldn't say like bloating or anything like that. I didn't really have much of that. 
Yeah. And did you have any pushback or anything from like the people around you? And how did you deal with yeah. that? Because I know a lot of people still say they really experience that. They're like, the people around me are vegan, yeah. like, and they give yeah. me a hard time. Like any yeah. tips for people? Were you still social? How'd you deal with all that? So I kind of took it in my stride um, and I made a few little quips to it in videos. Obviously I'm kind of heavy in the weightlifting community and, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the side of kind of TikTok and stuff of the, we are men, we lift weights, we are, yeah. you know, we are strong women, we lift weights, we eat yeah. meat. And, you know, it was only that noise. But then actually what was interesting was at the end, as I started to share my experience, a lot of them were like, how's he still lifting that much? And he's still, and, and he's saying he's feeling so much better. And it was funny to watch their their interest change. So at the start, I think like you do you, I, I would kind of, I was very public about it, but if I was to go back and do it again, I would probably just change and say nothing, right? I, I think if you're going to test it to see if the health markers improve, then yeah, but I think the ones closest to you that you know you care really about their opinion, being very open with them at the start is, I'm going to do this thing I need you to be on my side because especially mm -hmm. if it's a difficult transition for you, you need a, it sounds, it sounds really stupid in, in it. I think the next few years will change this, but I think you need a very small support network of people that are cheering you on to make the swap to these things. Cause you're right. If people are saying, or oh, are you going to come out and do this? You're like, oh, well I can't because of X, but I think swapping that mind frame to nowadays, I'm the classic example of oh, you can, you can go and eat places almost everywhere has an alternative and like i said in most cases it's sometimes better and um, so i think even you know vegan beers and you know there's 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 an alternative for just about everything and i think getting yourself a small support network of people that will be in your corner and cheer you on and if there's anybody that you think you know oh well you can tell the people who are going to be on board and who are not you know i, I could have made that list from the start a week before of people who were going to make little comments at me and stuff but if you're if you're not somebody who's like public about it like me then who cares just do your own thing find a little True. support network of people that want to cheer you on and just you do you. True. And were there any specific like documentaries, people, books, or like anything that like really inspired you and helped you stay on track? So there was the one with, I can't remember the name of it for the life of me, but there was the twin one. You'll know the oh, name of it. I, you know what? I saw that recently. That That's a new one on Netflix, right? Yeah. I think it's yeah, a yeah, twin yeah. experiment. You are what you eat, right? Yeah. yeah. So there was, yeah. there was a lot of this stuff published from it before the documentary came out. Um, mm -hmm. So it was more for me, like I'm a, a total geek with that stuff. Like I need to read everything all of the time, as you've probably heard for some of the, the words and the stuff that I say. <laughs> but um, so, so there was that. And then again, it was another documentary on Netflix, which I've since heard a lot of it's been disproved. But kind of the thing for me is even if it is, fanatic even if it is you know at the core of it if the message is right because there's some of these very polarizing you know short form content creators that are just doing something to make a to make an impact but i think that there's so much noise that that has to be done so if someone leans so far into eat plants or you'll die right if they lean so far into that if somebody if that grasps someone enough to go and look and just dip their toe in the water then that's okay so i think it was a combination of kind of not no specific creators really on social media but as i started to think about that because that's how you know social media ai brainwash works the, the algorithm moves towards you so as you start thinking about plants you get a lot of it um that way but there was i can't for the life of me remember the other uh, name of it but there was a documentary on netflix a super super famous one that was talking about all of the the, the benefits of it and i wish i could remember but that was one that, that kept me on but i think I had done enough research and gotten enough inspiration before rather than making a choice and trying to be inspired through the journey. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that I would say for anybody that thinks about doing it is clue yourself up first rather than trying to look for information when you're in amongst it. Like there's nothing wrong with you keeping your diet the same and learning about something. You don't have to swap straight away. If there's something that goes, oh Lord, you know, cause there's, there's, there's a whole different ethical side of this from like an animal side and animal cruelty and, and that kind of thing. And that, that can be a big driving force for a lot of people. And I think mm -hmm. that that can be a much more powerful driving force for some people. And mm -hmm. actually I think those people who are in that camp who really take that stuff personally, I didn't, I tried to stay away from that side of things because what I've, what I found was it's a very biased side for, for correct reasons. It's, it's, you know, when they're talking about animal cruelty and stuff completely, yeah. but I, I don't like to expose myself to watching videos like that because they it's just hard make to me watch. sad. Yeah, right? me too. I can't. It's really, really nah, difficult to watch. Nah. And, 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 and then I come away from that going, 
okay, I would love to make a difference here and change with the platform, but but really all I'm going to do is feel helpless because there's nothing I can do to stop the multi-billion pound industry that is this horrible animal farming thing. And so I think there's another way of reframing it, of bringing people into it and taking them away from that subconsciously without forcing images down your throat that you don't yeah. want to look at. Um, yeah. So so yeah, so so that that's that's a, a little bit trickier, but yeah, um, there's what it is. But even just cutting like most of the dairy too, like that's huge, you know? And like, yeah. that's not supporting that. Cause like, to me, I'm a mom and I know what they do in the dairy industry. Like, like you said yeah. too, I have a hard time. I can't watch that stuff, but I know like with the dairy industry, they get them pregnant just to take the baby yeah. calf away. And you yeah, hear yeah. that they have emotions and they have feelings and they're like weeping when they separate them. Mm -hmm. And as a mom, as somebody who I have two kids, five and 11, as somebody who breastfed both my kids, like to me, that would be the most horror yeah. I could have possibly experienced the yeah. worst thing I could experience. They take away my baby. So like, so you've, that's huge. You've given up the dairy. Cause to me, that yeah. industry is a lot worse than people even realize oh, yeah. too. And that yeah. is really crazy. So, yeah. well, any other tips for somebody, I'm just going to look at, get some viewers questions for you. They have some questions. They're curious, but any other tips for somebody who wants to start out and they're like, Steven, I want to do this. Like you stuck to 31 days. That's really awesome. That's really huge. Especially for a meat eater who's like, you yeah. know, in the past hard, hard, hardcore. I, I would even go as far as say, I'm very honest with this I, yeah. against the whole world of, of veganism and plant-based and being like, no, I am, I eat meat. I am. And yeah. So I want to say thanks for coming yeah. on my channel. Cause you know, I'm vegan, yeah. but you know, we're not dogmatic yeah. on this channel and we're so nice. So we're not yeah. like, we're not like the judgy vegans over here at all yeah. where we support we're nice, but yeah, thanks for coming on the channel too. I appreciate that as somebody who yeah, no. you know, comes very, from very that welcome. background. Well, right? I, I mean, I mean, I'm, I would no longer by any stretch put me even one percent in that camp anymore just wow. by trying it which i think is hilarious to look back at like if if me now could have a conversation with me a year ago it would just be like i'm not listening to what you've got to say but then me now is like oh my goodness i need to listen to what that person has to say and it's wow. literally just through trying it and i mean like i say that the split now my future plan is to continue to phase it out until i'm probably fully plant and um, it's just because like it's it literally is easier, right? And and that's why the majority of people do it. Like it is just because it's it is easier. And you know, my my miss is still she hasn't kind of she hasn't quite come on board with it yet. Yeah. Um and like feeding the little one is kind of it's it, it is harder to mm -hmm. to be completely accessible unless you're kind of smart about it. And mm -hmm. the one the one thing I will I wanted to point out is that one of the arguments I get is, oh, that must be expensive to eat that way. No, I wholeheartedly disagree. Um and that's just my experience. I don't know what it's like across across where you are, but here, like in the UK, I did not think, and I think anybody would says that hasn't truly tried it, especially when you get into the world of chickpeas and kidney beans and beans yeah, and pulses, beans like, and rice and sweet potatoes. Like I think it, no. yeah, way less it's a, than it's, me. It's a rub. It's a rubbish excuse. Like it's it doesn't work for me. It whenever, is whenever a rubbish excuse. It. I'm with you on that. Um. So yeah, I, I think my my advice would just be to. Find somebody who is on board with supporting you. That's that's the biggest one. Find somebody that's that, that's going to let you do it. And I think, I honestly think just try it. And also, I wouldn't do what I did unless you have some driving force, which is to cut it all out. Like, I know that there's fads like Meatless Monday and whatever else, but I think like just do a couple of days, right? Mm -hmm. And see what happens. And if if it doesn't work for you for whatever reason, then cool, you know? Like, but if if you have, if you've thought about it enough, to give it the the time of frame where you think if you're asking the question should I try it the answer is yes and just give it a few days right and maybe maybe it's just one time you go out and you go okay I think I'll just try an alternative and just try it and see uh -huh. how it goes what is there to lose nothing everything to gain and nothing to lose from it in my opinion um, and then it might just totally change your viewpoint it might just be so life-changing and shock you like you really learn from experiences on your own right like you said like a year ago you wouldn't even believe what yeah. you had to say now that you've done this experience it's totally changed your perspective right yeah and, and what, what was interesting is I know I talk about 31 days and it changed my perspective my perspective was changed within five days so like it didn't take the 31 days to change the perspective it took way less than that of how accessible it was how easy it was the health marker improvements it didn't take 31 days it took way less than that um wow. so yeah I, th I think i think just you know just what what is there to lose nothing um and if you don't like it don't like it if it doesn't work for you it doesn't work for you but i yeah. would just say if, if if you're if you're even got a one percent in your brain where something has caught your interest or a conversation like this you've went oh maybe just try it and see what happens it's 
Yeah. And did you see a doctor at all, like before and after, and they observe the changes or you check your blood pressure and everything on your own do, at home? Yeah. Do everything yeah. yeah. on my own. That's yeah. what it's, I figured. Um, it's very difficult here to get appointments and stuff. I'd be, I'd be waiting for months and weeks and, and whatever else. So, so I just monitor, I get monitor all my stuff myself. Yeah. But no, what an experience. I love it. My viewers have some questions too. Somebody was wondering, did you lose weight? You talked a bit about that. Do you know your exact weight before versus the end of the 31 days? And also they asked if you, how you dealt with cravings. Did you have any cravings? It sounds like you were pretty good and not really craving the old stuff too much. Like, did you miss meat a lot and crave it or no? I never, no, I didn't, I didn't crave meat. Um, I don't know wow. why I just, I just didn't, th there wasn't a time where I was like, damn, I missed that. And I think it was because the way I made that transition was I tried to copy things exactly, exactly the same spices, exactly the same sauces where I could get as close to possible, as close as possible. And the cravings was always sweet cravings. And like I said before, I swapped over to vegan chocolate. Um, I found like sweet snacks, like stevia, whatever else. Like I said, it wasn't super healthy, those things, but I just had them. There was like, you know, oat cakes with some type of yogurt on them, like the vegan protein, things like that, where I was just like, right, I have a, a craving for a sweet thing. And actually some of the like vegan alternative bars and stuff, like they were good. And one that really got me through it as well was vegan marshmallows. And and now I will never eat a normal marshmallow ever again because they're better, <laughs> right? Wow. There might not be there might not be many indulgent treats like that that are that give you the same mouthfeel, the same like there's there's some adjustment in that. But yeah, for the sweet craving stuff do the alternatives because they are good and um, and weight loss uh lost around two and a bit kilos total um like i say i'm a big guy i'm six four um at the time i think i was around about 95 kilos maybe or whatever that is in in american money 200 and something pounds um so yeah i lost i lost a bit but a big chunk of that would be glycogen because my carbs ended up coming coming down a little bit and i think just a little bit less salt, a little bit less. So some of it was mm -hmm. probably water, but it was quite clearly that there was a little bit of fat. But I think that I was trying to stay at maintenance or just below. And so if I was to have created more of a deficit, which by the way, would have been incredibly easy considering how much fruit and volume you can get in. Um, it'd be a very efficient way to to lose weight and lose fat specifically, I reckon. Yeah. Um, but that's, I didn't run it for long enough. I don't have enough data. Um, mm -hmm. to be able to make a full claim on that. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, I lost a little bit and it would probably work for a long time to to lose it and quite easily as well. Yeah. And who do you think this could be a ben beneficial experience for? Like if some, like, who do you think this could benefit? Literally everybody. Yeah. I don't think, <laughs> I think so I don't, too. yeah, I, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a person, <laughs> of course, there, of course there are, you know, there's going to be medical issues because there's a lot of ties between epilepsy stuff and keto, but that's a very specific example, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think, everybody else could benefit and, and a very key statement would be i think everybody else could benefit from trying it right so i don't think maybe there's people who won't actually benefit from the diet as a whole but i think everyone in the world could benefit from trying it and then i think that actually everybody would benefit from it i think if what it does put you in it puts you in a nice state of mind to be able to lose weight right so if i was using this for weight loss or fat loss if you have a goal of trying to eat plant-based, it keeps you very focused, right? Because you're very aware of what you're eating. Normally, you just yeah. eat intuitively. You just think, this thing's here, I'm going to eat it. But there's one little blocker every time. If you're, you know, you've 25, 30 years of just eating normally, eating intuitively, eating what you see, buying the things that are tasty. If there's, there's a classic example, I can't remember what the, what the study was, but there's, if you put a lock on the door, so people who binge eat at night, you put a lock on the door, You've got a key to the lock. There's nothing that stops you getting out the door, but it puts one block there just to be a kind of awareness of, okay, right, should I go and eat this thing? So you relate that back to the plant thing. You're like, okay, if there is one little decision you have to make, okay, I'm going to eat this thing, but I need to find a plant-based version. Then it makes you very aware of what's going in overall. And that's the most important thing, right? It's the eat less, move more argument all the time. You're thinking about what's going in and therefore inherently you do eat better. And then if if your goal is to lose some fat, lose some weight, and you need to be in a deficit, it makes that much easier. So I think if you're somebody who is doing that, just making the transition, say you're a meat eater that's thinking about plant-based, you want to lose some weight, just by going plant-based, I think that that makes the weight loss and fat loss journey easier mm -hmm. because you've got something else to focus on. And just a direct result of that is the weight loss and fat loss if you're in a deficit that way. So yeah, true. Well said. You're so well said, so smart and so not dogmatic and not judgmental. I like your attitude a lot. And somebody was saying, what was, what type of plant food was helpful? That's a good question. That's a question I would never think of. Do you think 
Cause you know, you did experience a lot of positive things with your digestion, with your blood pressure. Was there any foods in particular that you think helped or just overall just really cleaning things up and having the plants? I think probably the fruit, right? Mm, um, yeah. Based on the stuff that I know. And, and the, one of the things that I've, I found during it, cause I was obviously, I became very engulfed in the media side of it. Um, in particular in the social media side. And a lot of the scaremongering around fruit is crazy. And I can't remember yeah, who. True. I can't, remember, I, I can't remember who said it. There was somebody said, have you ever seen anybody get fat from eating too much fruit? Never in your life have you ever come across anybody. Do not tell me that that, that has ever happened. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think the fruit was, it's hard for me to narrow it down because I made such a drastic change. But in my opinion, based on everything that I know and everything I've seen, I think the fruit. Um, yeah. yeah. I think all the vegetables, the micronutrients from the vegetables and stuff would have made a huge difference. But I think the fruit was the biggest one, to be honest. Wow, cool, cool. And somebody said, what was the biggest change you experienced and how did it impact your life? So that's probably, was that the blood pressure, would you say? Or what do you think? Well, well it's it, it's difficult to say that. I think probably the energy levels because, so the blood pressure, because I wasn't symptomatic before and I wasn't, you know, symptomatic after, of course, mm -hmm. but because I wasn't symptomatic before, there was no real change apart from a reading on a, on a meter from a thing I was taking. But when True. I think about from a, a, I think it was probably the perspective on things. I think that was the biggest change for me. It opened up my mind to thinking about all of these things and thinking, especially like when I'm, I've come back to clients now and before it was, I had this very specific idea of what worked for everybody. And actually it opened my mind up to thinking we're all built differently. We all come from different ancestral backgrounds. We all mm -hmm. come from different areas. We've all got completely di different genetic makeups and they all require a completely different approach. And that opened my entire mind to that. And that has changed so many aspects of my life since then, from my coaching life to my training life, to life with my, especially for my little one. So we kind of just, you know, as blase as you do, you just take whatever they'll eat, right? Because it's, 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 it's a challenge at the best of times. Yeah. Yeah. But then actually you're like, right, maybe we should make a little bit more of an effort if, you know, when the kids are at such a, an important developmental stage, if you can introduce things like that, that made these markers for me improve. Well, if they're developing into the markers that are going to set them up for the rest of the life, then, you know, you put two and two together. I can only say that probably introducing these things earlier on is going to make them develop better. Again, based on very little apart from logic, mm -hmm. but it just made me think so, so we made changes in that just yeah generally i think it's the the mindset shift of stuff that was that would be the biggest change the energy levels was a huge one from a physical point of view in that specific 31 days but after the fact as far as changes go i think it's a mindset and perspective shift yeah absolutely okay and somebody said what are the next steps from here great question yep so the next steps from here kind of touched on it before i plan to continue to phase it out until a point where it's completely normal so when I kind of came back off it again, I just kind of, because it was a challenge at the end of the day, it was a, a, it was an experiment yeah. for me. Yep. Um, and, you know, e evidently I started to feel a bit worse again as I, you know, as I reintroduced meat and lots of oils and so on and so forth. So I started to feel a bit worse again. And I think for me, it was such a drastic change and mainly for social circles and so on and so forth. So I, I gave up alcohol as well this year. So that's been a bit easier um, for me to, because I'm not with those people anymore. So that means that I'm not in those situations where I would need to eat that anyway. And so now the transition for me, this is the perfect time for me to move towards that. So originally I was kind of 60, 40 when I came straight off it because it, the foods I now enjoyed had more plants and were generally plant-based. Mm -hmm. And then as I moved on from that, I've just planned to just tweak that up the way until I'll probably get rid of most meat. So as I say, dairy has gone. Um, so I think I will just continue to phase that out. I don't have the love or the want to to do that anymore it's just most of the time it's just convenience and yeah i think the plan for the future is just to continue but i think one big plan for the future for me is to continue to grow my social media to be able to spread the message of this thing that happened to me because yeah. i think it's important that people understand experience and that was the whole point of it for me was i don't understand this thing because i haven't done it so if i can say here's this thing i did and here is what i experienced go try it. Maybe these things will happen for you. I don't think it's about false claims or trying to say this thing will happen. It's, this is what happened to me. Do with that information as you choose. So I think the two things are one, phase things out a little bit more, continue to experiment, continue to get better at cooking, I suppose. And um, yeah, and, and just try to educate as many people on this as possible, not become one of the people that force it down your throat for, for yeah, whatever reason, but stay exactly. very unbiased. Yeah, yeah. Stay very unbiased and just 
say, okay, these are the things, and I, and I will continue to recommend to literally everybody to go and try it at least once, especially even more so people who shout at me for doing it. Like those are the people I want in secret because they'll never do it publicly. I want those people in secret to go, ah, maybe he's right. I need to try that. And that is my goal is to get those people, the people who are shouting from the bleachers at me, you know, for being the worst human in the world because I tried plant-based. I want to secretly annoy those people enough so that they will try it. And, you know, it's a pretty hefty goal because they're very loud. But um, yeah, that's kind of, that's most of the plans. <laughs> I love forward. the attitude. And you, did you try carnivore in the past ever? Like only yeah. meat? Wow. Yeah. So I'm um, so curious, like only meat, full carnivore. How did that go? What happened? Oh, I hate it. It was miserable. Um, and so, so a full carnivore was okay. Keto was horrendous. Wow. Like I hated it. Um, I felt the worst I've ever felt in my life. Um, I, I hear that from so many people. So many people comment on my channel that when they did keto or on my Instagram, they felt like crap. So what happened when you did keto? I couldn't wait to finish. Um, I was having like, I went very extreme. So like that you could call this plant-based experiment very extreme because I cut out everything on day one. And so the keto was the same. So I was having bulletproof coffee in the morning, you know, I'd be having butter in it. I'd be just eating eggs and steak and, 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 and. And so I was like, night i wasn't even normally keto i think you can still begin to produce ketones and move away from carbohydrates up to around about seven or eight percent of carbohydrates i was like two three percent of carbohydrates so i was extreme in the land of keto so i was i was using sticks to check i was in ketosis consistently so most people that actually say they're on a keto diet aren't actually on a keto diet they're on a high fat diet right mm -hmm. um, and there's a big difference between a high fat diet and a keto diet because your body's using a different source of fuel so you could still be using carbohydrates and not be producing ketones and then you're just in a high fat diet and then you're not getting to eat very much because there's so much calories and fat right so then you just feel miserable but i was full-blown keto and i just i was lethargic i had no energy in the gym i was clearly depleted i lost like I don't know, 10 pounds in a week and a bit just from being depleted from water. My performances in the gym disintegrated vividly. I mean, there was an element of it where mentally I was like, yes, this is, you know, this is how my ancestors used to eat and blah, blah, blah. And like, that was the only thing that I had to pin back to. And I was desperate to finish. Whereas this one, I was like, oh, that's the end of it. That's a shame. And then I took on loads of stuff. I kept nothing from that. I, I learned nothing apart from the fact I hated it. Um, I took nothing after the fact. Whereas when you think about plants, I've brought on, I've gotten rid of dairy. I have, you know, brought in loads of plant alternatives. I've learned to cook better. I took nothing from that, apart from the fact that it is miserable. Um, but if you want to look good, um, you can do it and then stick it and be miserable forever. That is that is the way. If you've got, <laughs> if you've got, to, if you've got ten pounds to lose and you want to lose it in the next two weeks, do it. And then just remember that if you ever eat carbs ever again, it will go straight back on. And then um, yeah, that's it. The and the. The keto warriors, and like I say, there's a lot of them on social media and they shout very loudly. And I think that maybe only 70% of them are actually on a keto diet. And I say that because I know how difficult it was for me to be that disciplined. I didn't have to be particularly disciplined on plant-based, to be honest, but I had to be incredibly disciplined to remain in ketosis all the, all the time. And I think that people don't generally have that discipline. So I think they're just on a high fat diet and they just shout from the bleachers. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because keto is just mainly, so it's animal products, it's meat, and it's high fat, right? Correct. Pretty much like avocados, like high fat, high meat. See that? Uh, yeah, I can yeah. see why so many people say they don't feel good on that. And yeah. like I said, a lot of people comment on my socials that they didn't. If you guys try keto, let me know down below. And another thing you said that just stuck with me was you quit alcohol. I think you said this year, or yeah. last year. That's huge. I used to be a daily drinker. So I'm 41. I spent my whole 20s and my early 30s drinking every yeah. day, a whole bottle of wine or barbecuing, drinking beers every day. Yep. Now I think I've had two glasses of wine in the last five years, literally total. And my life is so much better. Those yeah. old relationships are gone because I realized all we had to bond over was alcohol and toxic conversations we'd have yeah. while drunk on alcohol. Yeah. So how has it changed your life? Do you miss the alcohol? Do you think you'll always keep it out? And what sort of happened as a result of that? Uh, so I kind of had a, I've wanted for ages. I, I'm one of those people who, if I have a point in time, I can stick to a thing. And then when I have the thing started, if I have a streak, I don't like to break it. Like I'm stubborn mm -hmm. that way. So I kind of said last year, I only, you know, I had five or six nights out where I drank, but like, I'm one of those people who, when I drink, I drink. Like, I, I'm one of those people in life where I have a goal. I have a goal. If my goal is to get drunk, I'm going to get very, very, very drunk. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way that, you know, it's just the way that I work, right? 
Um, and that's kind of how I relate it. And I was finding that as I got a little bit older, you weigh up the list of pros and the list of cons. And so I'd say like, oh, I'm not going to drink this year. I'm not going to drink this year. And then something would come up or you'd still be hung over on the 1st of January. And, and then that doesn't really count. You've not really done the time and whatever else. And, and I was finding that like, I was only spending time with certain people in circumstances where I was drinking. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm only drinking five times in the year, then the rest of the 90%, 95% of the year, I'm not with those people. They don't check in. So, you know, fine. So there's, there's the social aspect of it. But then there's, like, my goals are aligned to business goals, social media, um, rapport with my kid and with my missus. And I'm getting married next year. And I'm like, I'm, I'm 31. I'm, I'm at this point where there is no need for it. The list of cons is so massive. And I'd be, I'd, I'd feel like crap for, you know, an entire week or, or, or even, even longer. Like competitive goals for CrossFit doesn't align with that. Like family doesn't align with that. Money doesn't align with that. And so I was just like, what am I getting from this? Nothing. Like I, I have a good time for a few hours and then the sacrifices are so massive. So on Boxing Day last year, I had, I got really drunk again and I just woke up next day. I was like, you know what? Next year I'm just not drinking. So this will be weekend number 13. And I've never wanted to not drink so much in my life. Um, I'm just, I have no want to do it anymore. Like, wow, way to go, Steven. Yay. That's so yeah. huge. That's amazing. And think how different, like, okay, you're 31. Think where you'll be at 41, giving up alcohol in your thirties yeah. versus if you continue to drink it. Like, yeah. I agree with you. Like it just does nothing for you. Nothing positive. So again, smart, yeah. another smart yeah. decision. It's so great. Your goals are in line. And who knows where you'll be in 10 years because your goals are all in like a positive direction. Like your mind yep. is in the right place with things. You've got a good head on your shoulder. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. And okay. Is there anything else before we end off that you want to share with my audience? Anything you think we missed about your journey or anything you feel called to share with them and let everybody know where they can find you as well. And I'll link everything down below so everybody can go follow you. Yeah, cool. Um, no, I would just say my, my my message would be to, to I'm assuming that you know a lot of consumers of this 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 content are probably already sold mostly on it. But I would just say that if you're somebody who's ever been on the fence or hasn't actually tried it and given it a go, it just it, everything you've heard me talk about is not. As you can see, I'm probably the least biased person that is, that has ever talked on this subject. I was completely biased the other way, and I've swung this way based on nothing but my own experience. And I just think that if you have been on the fence about it, then just give it a shot, a couple of days, three days, four days, five days, and see what it does for you. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, then, you know, do your thing. Um, so yeah, that, that'd be the, the, the only thing. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm Stephen Rayner underscore. Um, I've got a new YouTube channel, which is a fitness YouTube channel, which will be linked um, on the video yeah. to go look at. Um, and if anybody wants to chat on anything at all, ever, um, reach out. I'm very open and honest on all of my socials that you'll see, sometimes slightly less PC than this discussion. But <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, that's that's kind of that's kind of all thank you very much for having me on it's been fun yeah no it's been amazing and thank you so much for coming on for sharing your story i can guarantee i'm almost positive it has definitely inspired at least one person watching and if it has inspired you guys give it a big thumbs up right now make sure to subscribe and we will catch you guys in the next video bye guys thank you very much bye